I'm Antonio Sala, and in this video we will go through a simple but complete example of the Bayesian optimization methodology. We will not delve into the details of the code, because such details and further refinements will be dealt with in future videos. Our goal here is understanding the basic idea as a motivation for further study. So the goal of Bayesian optimization will be obtaining the minimum of a function with an statistical model of it. The function is unknown to the algorithm until we decide which points x to sample. The basic idea is setting a prior, acquiring some first samples and updating the, the prior, deciding which is the best next sample, acquiring, updating and repeating and repeating until my sample budget exhausts, for instance. In order to decide which is the best sample to try, we need to do a statistical analysis on how promising a point x is. We do it for all x. And the most promising, the one which achieves a best value of some function a of x, related to how good it is, then we will choose that one as next sample and a of x is called acquisition function or surrogate function in literature and in this first simple example we will just use what is called the lower confidence bound acquisition function determining the point in my statistical model gaussian that has a 2.5 percent probability of things being even lower than that point this will be min minus two standard deviations 1.96 actually but okay the details will be left for future materials now let us grasp the basic methodological idea as follows we will first set the true function for my simulation but of course this true function will not be known to my algorithm i will have a budget of 12 samples to test and I will set a prior with zero mean and this confidence intervals 95% and I will acquire a sample just in the center of my search range. This one will be, let's say, decided by just heuristics, you know, just test the center and we'll see what happens and we will subsequently apply Bayesian optimization. But the first one is, okay, get this one. Well, good. I mean, the prior needs to encode some function smoothness. And that smoothness is encoded with this covariance kernel. A vertical standard deviation of 0.6 and a standard correlation distance length scale parameter of 0.65. And I will use this squared exponential kernel that has no relationship whatsoever to the normal distribution, even if it is the same formula. So this is just some formula that computes the covariance, the correlation between points x1 and x2. And it's usual to use this squared exponential, but you can put many other options. So the thing is that this squared exponential tells me how smooth the function is. And for instance, there may be other cases in which I have some physical knowledge telling me a non-zero mean and while well, that covariance tells me how the increments above the mean go up and down and which is the maximum frequency content of them. And in this case, for instance, these realizations of the prior, while well, the increments above the mean have exactly the same covariance kernel as I am doing in my zero mean example. So if we believe the increments around the mean can have this up down shape, smoothness and whatever, then we follow with Bayesian optimization because, I mean, the key step is setting a prior that models the likely smoothness and shape of my unknown function. And that's the key step in the sense that as my function is unknown, in principle, I have no way of knowing this until I acquire a lot of samples of my function and test it. But we are in a prior, we have just one sample and okay, let's hope 
our assumptions are true. Of course, this is a well-prepared example and they are true. In future videos, we will discuss other examples in which Bayesian optimization does not work, but okay, my true function is this kind of smooth. So everything starts with my prior and my first sample and the methodology is just repeating the, the steps of updating the posterior, deciding next sample, acquiring it and repeat and repeat and repeat until 12 samples in this case. So with this code, I carry out that posterior update, Gaussian process location. I am not delving into it here. Look other videos and materials on the web. The thing is that my updated posterior just shrinks to almost zero variance in the measured point. This residual variance is approximately two standard deviations of the measurement noise. In blue, I have the posterior mean and in the red dotted lines, I have the upper and lower confidence bounds and my heuristics in exploring where the optimum might be is well, is exploring the minimum of this line, which is achieved here and here. And well, MATLAB just chose the left extreme, but maybe other code versions or MATLAB versions might choose the right one. No problem. I mean, we keep the left. So the thing is, this heuristics is fast to compute. The lowest confidence bound in red tells me that one in 40 times 2.5%, the function may be that low. And it's kind of a risky heuristics in the sense that I will not get that low, but okay, let's explore because maybe I am very lucky. Like when you buy a lottery ticket saying that, okay, I will not get millionaire, but well, let's try just in case. Well, so in this case, the algorithm proposes sampling here and the true function plus minus some measurement noise ends up providing this sample. So I will introduce that sample to my Gaussian process formula and update the posterior. Here we have, after including this sample, the new posterior, then of course, confidence bounds are narrowed to more or less measurement noise at the samples. And I have this new lower confidence bound in here and the lowest lower confidence bound is here. So if we are lucky, maybe the minimum is on here. Well, we propose doing that experiment, let's say. And well, no, we were not lucky in the sense that uncertainty was very wide and the function was actually well above the mean. So I incorporate that new green sample to the historical record and repeat and repeat again. This is the new sample. And then this is the new interpolation. This is the new point where the lowest lower confidence bound is achieved. So this is the new suggestion. And well, as you look here, it's beginning to approximate the global optimum point, optimum sample. Okay, the vertical green line is the true optimum that, of course, it is unknown to my algorithm and my statistical analysis must guess that position after acquiring a handful of samples. So we see that the fourth one, well, third one by Bayesian, because the first one was just the middle one, well, it starts getting close to what we seek. We update posterior, then based on this lowest point here, it recommends this new sample. Now it recommends this one. We are getting close. And if we repeat and repeat and repeat until we get 12 samples, they start gathering around that point, which hopefully, if Bayesian optimization did work well, would be the global optimum. Another sample. And well, as I am god of everything and I know the true function. I can now reveal the ground truth. Here we have it, this thick olive green line. And it seems that 
indeed up to some measurement noise, we correctly guessed the global optimum of the green line, which was of course unknown to my algorithm until I revealed it for didactical purposes. But of course in an application we will never know the true function. We will just guess that if the smoothness of the true function and the range of variation is close to what I encoded in my prior, then hopefully these methodologies or variations of them will correctly guess the global minimum. If we now plot the evolution of the search for the optimum in this plot, we have the iteration number in the abscissa axis. We have a first sample, sample zero, out of the Bayesian optimization algorithm, and then from one onwards, they are Bayesian optimization decisions. So the blue line are the function values that Bayesian optimization is obtained, and the red star is the best sample in the historical record. And well, we see that basically after three Bayesian optimization decisions, we get the true optimum plus minus a measurement noise uncertainty given by the two standard deviation confidence interval on the true optimum, which is the black horizontal line at minus 0.70 something. That true optimum is of course unknown, but our Bayesian optimization hits it after its third decision. So this example works perfectly because everything was prepared to show off the possibilities of this Bayesian optimization. But of course, in other videos, we will put some, let's say, counter examples when my true function and my prior strongly disagree. And so Bayesian optimization will find results that are rubbish, but that will be left for future refinements and discussions. So this is it. We end the video here. Thanks for watching.